Hey there friends, welcome to the shop. You know I love my Proton Pack. We've been doing some upgrades, but the straps are far too new, which is why I'm so excited that we have an excellent guest with us. We have Robot Ben Eady here. Hey Ben, how you doing? Hey, good, how about yourself, Ben? Uh, we're having a great time doing everything Ghostbusters, and you did literally everything Ghostbusters because you got to work on the new movie. And we're so excited to see it. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is, is that I still get chills. Like, it's been two years since we stopped filming, almost to the day. And I still, you think back and I just get the chills. It's It was an amazing experience is the understatement of the year. That's exciting. And that makes me feel so good and very excited to go see the movie. Uh, ben works on prop stuff yeah. in lots of really cool movies, including the Ghostbusters one. I got really excited last week when we saw you helping Adam with his proton pack, especially all the yes. really fun weathering techniques. So today, mm. Ben is going to help us with some ideas to make these things look old and beaten up and dirty. We started by washing them. Yeah, so, you know, one of the best ways to sort of beat up a prop is to beat up a prop and to wash it. Like, if you got something that's washed, if you have a couple of days, you have somebody literally sit at the washing machine and throw it in, throw it in the dryer, and throw it in the washing machine, and throw yeah. it in the dryer, throw it in the washing machine. So, um, yeah, washing is is probably, you know, the one of the best things you can do, actually. Uh, yeah, and the straps I have here I washed twice with just bleach. I probably could have done it a bunch more times, but I didn't have yep. quite enough time. Uh, but that was the first step to start breaking down these pieces. And Ben's got a handful of other techniques he's going to tell us about. The next thing you need to do is to literally beat up the props. And that can be go into a back alley and go kick the prop around or drag it through the dirt. And one of my favorite tools is this little cuts all file. Um, or it's a rasp and it seems to sort of grab and, and frame material really well So that's a good way to get sort of that rough edges It's also another thing you can use all those dull blades that you get from cutting EVA foam I keep a couple around because it's a great way to cut up the fabric without damaging it too much or making too clean of a cut You get some sort of bad knives and you, you dice it away. Yeah, it gives you that rough edge that you might want to get. Right, you, you might think like if you're running around New York City fighting ghosts with this strap to you, it might get caught on something, it might tear or pull or rip. It's not going to be like a nice easy, yeah. a good clean slice. I have plenty of used dull rusty blades that I've been keeping for such an occasion. Yes, everybody must keep them. <laughs> you know, another thing here is that uh, I'm thinking that you're, you're using an unlicensed uh, nuclear device, but usually things get burnt. I imagine they get pretty hot. So we've got our torch here and we'll very selectively pick a few spots to just melt yeah. a little bit. This is nylon, so so it's gonna melt, but yeah, it's, you don't wanna melt the whole thing. Be selective. It's kind of funny. We had uh, one of the producers showed up uh, to, the, to the prop area that we were working out of. And uh, we were literally on a proton pack with a saw in hand we're dicing pieces off of it and we were beating it up and he's like what are you doing and we're like well, we're just getting the props ready for the show <laughs> you have any idea how much we paid for that proton pack all things considered when you get into movie props they become very very expensive you're wanting to make things pretty accurate and whatnot so all that research and all that back end can make for an expensive prop. So imagine as a producer walking into a room and, and here's these um, uh, rationally challenged individuals with saws <laughs> in your props. <laughs> you can always get a few of those those moments where your your bosses are just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> now these, these um, straps, there's a lot of nylon on here, but there's also a lot of real metal parts. Uh, and weathering that can be really fun. So yeah, breaking down the metal, you know, Sandpaper is your friend. It's uh, you, you want to rough it up, but don't just take sandpaper and just sort of scrape it. When you scrape it, you can sort of see that somebody's just done little scrapes. You know, do really broad strokes and just just kind of you know hit it like you're flying past like yeah. a bird. Get a, get and, a running and you're start. You find that it, it looks a lot more realistic when you do that. It also gives you a little deeper cut, especially if you're using some of the heavier grit uh, sandpaper. Um, like I've said before, is beat it up if you got the opportunity to take it out in the real world and just beat it up you know be an idiot and run around in your with your proton pack downtown and scrape up against walls that might be your best option yeah. but that helps a lot with a lot of sort of like say adding an acid treatment like jacks 
mm-hmm. to to rest it up. And that that being said, is on your last episode, you had used some jacks. Yeah. Um, there's different versions of this stuff for like brass and for steel, and I think there's even aluminum. And you know, just experiment with it. Sometimes you might find the aluminum stuff works great on steel, but yeah. you, you don't know unless you kind of play around with the stuff. Sure. But this uh, yeah. I have this Sculpt Nouveau stuff. This Tiffany green is meant for brass, but it makes steel look really ruddy red um, when it oxidizes. I really like this stuff. We also have one that's tan that works really well too. Uh, anywhere nice. there's expo- the exposed raw metal, it just makes it look all crunchy and awesome. You're gonna have to give me those links because I, I totally want to see that stuff. Oh yeah. Maybe even leave the links down below. I could. <laughs> YouTuber Ben Eady. <laughs> ben has a channel that we'll link to as well that you can go and should subscribe to. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. You know, metal parts, you know, even the washing machine. Uh, if you got, okay, kids, if you're at home and you've got parents, they will hate you for this. So do not do this. Uh, or find an old washing machine and throw metal pieces into a washing machine with some rocks and stuff and just let it go. <laughs> These metal parts here that I put through the wash um, have started to chip. Like the paint has started to chip, chip on the edges just from going in the washing machine without yeah. any rocks. Yeah. And you know, that's that's one way you can do it. At the beginning of a show, sometimes there's people sitting beside your know, new washing machine and a new dryer and literally just swapping things through constantly just to get that look. Mm-hmm. Also breaking down metal and stuff, uh, you, using some talc or using some of the Fuller's Earth and, and that sort of stuff. You can get a really cool rust technique. In fact, if you watch Adam's video when we were there, um, I almost cried because there was a whole bunch of time that we spent making things look rusty. You know, using a brush and dabbing it, and, mm-hmm. you know, doing doing washes, which is great. But if you're in a rush, you don't have time for that. And so Adam comes out with some spray glue and some Fuller's Earth. And he sprays a little section and he powders the edge. And then, you know, it looks perfect almost straight <laughs> off. And I'm just like, oh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so much you can do with powders. We have a bunch of different pigment powders here, like Fuller's Earth or this. This is a darker earth um, that works yeah. so well. And I'm definitely going to use these just to make, even just to make the, the fabric parts of this look dirtier. Um, totally. Uh, as well as the, the fun rust effects that you can do. And you can get a little bit of texture with it as well. Um, you know, if you're gonna maybe use paint on the straps is put down a really heavy black uh, paint on the straps, then use some rust colored Fuller's Earth and throw that into the into the wet paint mm-hmm. and then maybe wipe it away. But then, then you get a little more texture and, and sort of a gradient and, and a little more, you know, it's one color rarely looks right. Two colors is okay. But as soon as you go into three colors when you're breaking something down, that seems to be the magic. Yeah, yeah. And you got to imagine like you're rolling around, you're getting slimed, you're rolling around the dirtiest parts of uh, New York City. Um, There's going to be some crustiness. There's going to be lots of color. You're not just going to have one flavor of grime. Perfect. (laughs) You know, one of one of our prop guys, Peter White, the one thing that blows me away is I was sitting there and we're breaking stuff down and he's like, why aren't you using green? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why aren't we using green? And I'm not sure exactly why, but you don't, your brain doesn't register the green and rust, but as soon as you ah. add it, suddenly it really brings it up a little bit, just like an, an olive green, just a touch of huh. it. And it really seems to just add, I, I can't describe it. You have to try it and take a look at it. But that, you know, like I said, is an olive green is, is kind of key in a lot of stuff that he does. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I'm that. I'm putting that in my back pocket for next yeah. time I'm doing a paint, a rusty paint treatment. Well, that's really fabulous, Ben. Those are a ton of fantastic techniques. Some new stuff. I know that I'm putting in my uh, quiver for some of my future projects, and a lot of really useful stuff that's specific to doing things like straps. Thank you so much, Ben, for walking us through this process. Bill, I want you to know that um, one of my first jobs in film was Star Trek Beyond. It was in oh. Vancouver. And I just discovered your channel. Yeah. And I started watching it. And I thought it was so cool. I don't think you understand how many of your tips and tricks that I use day in and day out <laughs> that make me look like a hero on set. <laughs> That's and awesome. And dude, what you've added to my life and the skill sets you've given me are insurmountable. And I, I just want to thank you because like, oh, you're you know, welcome. It, I've been a fan and now, you know, in a weird way, you might be a fan of me. It's oh, kind yeah. of weird to say that, but you know, it's, it's one of those you, things where it's kind of fun, you know? <laughs> That's wonderful. And I'll tell you what, too. I'll plug it again. I'm a big fan of Ben's YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> ben is the kind of guy who loves inventing new techniques and pushing the limits of what's possible and then sharing it with the rest of us, which we all very much appreciate. So thank mm-hmm. you, Ben. 
Yeah. Um, once again, we'll have a link to that YouTube channel down below where you should go subscribe immediately and go look at the back catalog because like I said, you have a couple of specific techniques that are real game changers and worth knowing. Yeah. Uh, that'll wrap it up. I guess uh, we should all go see the new Ghostbusters movie as soon as uh, it's in theaters. This isn't a paid sponsorship or anything. I just love Ghostbusters <laughs> and I'm friends with Ben, so we're doing it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ben, so much for hanging out with us. Thanks to our Extra Credit Club for supporting us over the years. You guys are amazing. And thanks to everyone for hanging out with us in the shop. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, leave them in the co uh, comments. And we'll see you in the next project. See you, gang. See you guys. All right. <laughs>